Hi everyone, this is Bucky with Transit and Level Clinic, and today we're going to do a brief tutorial on how to enter uh, BRS system specific information. So for those of you looking to um, go in and add your particular state's BRS system, your username, the password, the IP address, the port, uh, this video is for you. So again, this is like a SmartWorks Viva. Uh, we're going to assume a couple things before we get going with this process. The first thing we're going to assume is that we're in GPS mode. Uh, so obviously SmartWorks Viva has two modes, TPS and GPS. We do want to be in GPS mode only for right now. The second thing that we're going to assume is if you have gone into instrument that you have connected your GPS via Bluetooth. Uh, if you have not done that, you will need to go into your connections tab. Uh, you'll need to go into GS Connection Wizard select the GNSS sensor that you do have, and then follow the wizard to pair that up via Bluetooth. For now, we're going to use the example of a GS10, GS15, uh, and we'll go into our settings from here. So again, whenever you need to enter uh, state-specific or VRS system-specific information, uh, you will do that uh, by going into your instrument tab or instrument menu, connections, and then all other connections. At the top, you'll see that you have two different tabs. This is the part that most people miss. You have a CS Connections tab and you have a GS Connections tab. The CS Connections tab is specific to the GPS uh, rover uh, that you have uh, paired to this unit uh, via cable or Bluetooth. In this case, as you have already seen, our GPS rover is hooked up via Bluetooth to a GS10, GS15 unit. So again, we're assuming that this has been done at this time, and we're going to cut over to our GS Connections tab, which is what we're going to be most interested in for entering all of our VRS settings. Now again, on this particular page, this particular menu, you do have a number of options here. Uh, Leica has really opened this up to be able to do a number of things. However, in our case, because we are just going to be doing a VRS connection, we will stay within the RTK rover uh, tab here. So we're going to go ahead and click that and make sure that's bold. You'll notice that's in dark orange now here. It may be in dark blue on the full version. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and select RTK Rover and then we're going to hit our edit button at the bottom. The very first tab you'll see is a general tab. You'll see that we have nothing else until we check receive RTK data and then we have four tabs at this point. In order to receive RTK data for this particular unit, we're going to set this up using the controller's internet with a hotspot. So we will connect using CS Internet 1. If you are using an onboard modem in your GS receiver or a onboard SIM slot on your controller or some other type of uh, internet uh, piece of equipment, then you do have a drop down here and you can select that uh, in this particular drop down list. For CS Internet 1, it's automatically going to give us an RTK device, it's internet, and then we can select the type of signal that we will be using. In this uh, particular case, I'm going to be using RTCM version 3. However, depending on the network that you're connected to, the equipment that you have, you may choose uh, CMR, a Leica, um, or uh, SPAS. We'll leave off the check to use an auto coordinate system. We will put that into our settings and then we'll receive RTK network information. Um, we are not going to automatically connect under this scenario. We do want that to be something that we can go in and set up a quick key to later, be able to start our RTK um, uh, connection at that point. Going over to the next tab, RTK base, we're going to leave these on default, automatically detect sensor at base and the antenna at base. You do have drop down menus and can select these if needed. RTK network, you will select to use the RTK network and then choose the type of RTK network that you will be connecting to. Now I'm in North Carolina here, we use a VRS network and I have selected VRS. However, if you are using um, uh, SmartNet, you may choose uh, IMAX or nearest uh, network type as well. And then we can flip over to our advanced tab here. We will use prediction. Uh, we're gonna turn off our height filter and for now, we're going to choose not to use or compute RTK positions, XRTK positions. 
Uh, these uh, will be talked about a little bit more in another video that we're going to be doing on GNSS sensors later down the road. GLONASS and SBAS are both automatic, and we're going to save hitting the OK button at the bottom. So once we've hit OK, now we have our CS Internet 1, our device's Internet. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, you now have a control button. And the control button is where we're going to enter specific information for the VRS now that we know that's what we're using. So we're going to come into control. It's going to ask us the server that we want to use. So for example, if you are using SmartNet in Virginia, virginiava.smartnet.com. Uh, in North Carolina here, we have our own web address. It's rtn.nc.gov. Uh, and depending on what state you have, you may have an IP address or a web address that's specific to that network. You'll notice at this time we have none selected. We've entered no information at this point. So we're going to hit down the drop down menu. And this takes us to a list of all of our servers that we've entered. So, for example, we have many customers that may work in three, four, five states. And they may choose to choose or to put all of their VRS networks into this list and choose from them as they go along. In this case, we've entered new information, so we're going to go down to the bottom, we're going to hit new, and we're going to give our VRS system a name. In this case, we're going to call it North Carolina VRS, just so we know uh, where it is. Our address, again, can be an IP address. It can also be a web address. Here it is rtn.nc.gov. Go ahead and enter that, and our port here is 2101. Again, if you're on something like SmartNet, it would be va.smartnetna.com and your port may be 10,000 uh, depending on where you're at. Next we're going to hit our NTRIP tab. The NTRIP tab allows us to select that we're going to use NTRIP and that we are going to put in a specific user ID and password. So for example here in North Carolina uh, we have a user ID that will have a 010203 after it signifying which crew is using it and then a password to go along with that. I'll go ahead and enter mine, which is going to be like a 01, and then we'll put our password in as well. Click in the blank space, hit store, and at this point we now have our server to connect to as rtn.nc.gov, which again is the North Carolina network. We will save it by hitting the OK button, and we will come to a mount point screen. This is where we're going to uh, generate a mount point or a basic language that you'll be collecting this data in. Uh, we are using the North Carolina VRS system. Right now we have no mount point. We're going to go down to the bottom, hit source. This will automatically use our internet to dial in to the network that we've entered and to allow us to select from all of the mount points available. So here in North Carolina, we have both CMR, we have uh, versions of CMR, we have versions of RTCM. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, RTCM3, not for any specific reason, just as an example for now. So we're going to highlight that, hit OK. And then when we return to the screen, we do have our VRS underscore RTCM3 uh, to be used. We'll save with the OK button. We'll save again with the OK button, returning to the main menu, and at this point we are ready to connect. So again, if you have any questions, please give us a call at the office, 919-467-7782, or visit our website at www.transitandlevel.com. Thank you.